Be fine, bring the seven says, husband, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we see here how God loves the church. He died for the church, for his bride. Okay, that's how much he loves the church. And he's calling husbands to love your wives the same way as Christ also loved the church. You should be ready to die for your wife. If it comes to a place where you have to uh, protect her, giving your line, uh, that should be an honor, a privilege, because that shows your love for your wife. So the same way, that is why the church is under attack, because Satan hates the very bride of Jesus Christ. Because I love Satan, yun ang pinakapuso ni Jesus. He loves the church very much. So Satan hates, which what God's love. Verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he may present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Alam mo dati, uh, when there was a bright, nag-aaral like, kami kagabi, and, and during the Old Testament, it talks about kung yung bride dumating tapos she's not a virgin and the husband found out. Alam mo nung time nun, kasapinin sa public, and dadali yung babae sa halagit na, and she will be stoned to death. Because that was a picture of very uh, uh, shamefulness, showing that hindi mo pinaserve yung sarili mo dun sa yung husband. And during that time, it was a big issue. Sabi ko nga, if they will practice that ngayon, siguro marami mga kababayan na upos, patay, stone to death. But they looked at that as a very degrading thing that you're supposed to preserve yourself for your husband. And this is what Jesus is talking about the church. The church gusto niya spotless. God wants His wedding one day na parang sa virgin na the babae na preserve himself for her husband. And that's the same way with the church. That's why the Bible says, I want it spotless. A glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without Blemish. So God takes the church very seriously. Okay? Because yan yung kanyang bride. And gusto niya that it will be present itself a glorious church that has been spotless, no wrinkle. And we see, but if it wasn't for grace, sabi nga buti na lang yung, yung makita natin yung grace ng Panginoon na sabi niya, di ba, yung, yung may illustration na merong babato yung babae because she was an adulterous woman, she was living in sin. And sabi ng Panginoon, sige, uh, batoy niyo siya kung wala kayo kasalanan. And it showed them that God still had mercy and grace. Even yung ating life is sinful and wicked na dudog pa rin yung grace ng Panginoon. Pero sa church ng Panginoon, He expects yung kanyang church to be present without blemish, without spot. A holy church. Okay? And we should love the church kagaya ng pagmamahal ni God sa simbahan. Okay? Uh, it's, it's amazing how people will just attack the church, uh, destroy the church, gossip about the church. But as a true believer, bilang isang anak ng Diyos, dapat nandudun yung pagmamahal mo sa yung church. Especially the body of Christ, yung spiritual church. Okay? Uh, lalo na yung mga kapatiran sa Panginoon. Uh, the very thing that hurts me is yung mga brothers and sisters, pag may mga atake ng iba tagalabas, parang na nakahanggal kasi alam mo you are part of that body di ba kung may matake sa isa sa mananang palatay ramdam natin kasi kapatira natin sa Panginoon alam natin na uh, isa tayo we are one in Jesus Christ so if anybody attacks a Christian a child of God makita natin na, na nakikiramin bawat isa na nandudun yung heart broken nandudun yung head, uh, heartache uh, we carry one another's burden because we are the church of God. And that is why Satan hates the church so much. Because makita natin, there is true unity among true believers. Meron talagang pagkakaisa. Alam nila yung alam pag-ibig sa simbahan. Ganun na lamang. Revelation chapter 21 verse 2, it says, And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Why is the church of God spotless? Because it was purchased by the very blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? 
Uh, so it, it is purified. Makita natin, even yung ating uh, lifestyle, yung know, purify ng Panginoon, God is sanctifying us, hindi pa tapos, but it will come to a place where we will be so purified, makita natin, that we will be doing the pride of Christ. Not because of what we've done, but what, because of what God has done. God has cleansed us, has made us perfect in His own eyes. We are, our standing point, perfect na tayo sa harap ng Diyos. Kasi hindi na nakikita ng Panginoon yung ating kasalanan, nakikita niya na yung ginawa ng kanyang anak na si Jesus, na perfect tayo sa harap ng Diyos. Okay? But we know in our own self, we are not perfect, but in our standing before God, ang nakikita na ni God, hindi na yung ating kasalanan, kung hindi yung ginawa na ni Jesus sa cross ng Calvary, na nagpa-perfect sa atin. Amen? Yun yung kaibahan natin sa hindi malalapalataya. Okay? So God considers already perfect. He paid for our sin, our past, our future, our present sins, all covered by the blood of God. But does not mean that we should continue in sin because uh, we are, He paid for our sin. No. We must strive to grow in holiness and righteousness. Sa Panginoon. Number two, why is the church constantly attacked? Number two, because it is the body of Christ. Understand that Satan hates everything that God loves. And number two, he hates the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, the Bible says, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So makita natin, naadras ni Paul, yung suffering, yung mga pagsubok natin, that is part of all the church because the church is always constantly attacked. Kaya ang sabi ni Jesus, do not take it strange na may mga atake sa'yo, pag-Christiano ka na. Huwag mo isipin na nakakagulat, bakit inaatake ka na. Normal po yun sa isang man ng paratayan. The Bible says, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It does not say, will suffer persecution. It doesn't say, ay, magsasuffer ka pag ito'y naging manang pala tayo pag nilingkod. Sabi ng Bible, hindi. Magsasuffer ka talaga. Okay? That's why the Bible talks about pick up your cross and follow me. So a cross is always a picture of suffering. Wala pong nagbubuhat ng cross na madali. If you look at history, the cross was a picture of great suffering, a great pain, a trial, a burden. Nabuhat-buhat mo, pagod ka na. So the same way as a Christian life, na yun dyan po yung, yung persecution, yun dyan yung suffering, yes, we have inner peace, we have inner joy, but outwardly alam natin we will face all these sufferings because we live in a fallen world, a world that hates God. Okay? Yung mundo na ito, hate na hate nilang Panginoon. I was just looking at the news and I was seeing the governor of New York. Ano mo sabi niya? Uh, Nagrababa na raw yung rate ng kanilang uh, COVID-19. Medyo na naan na raw nila. At sabi nila, it wasn't God that did this. It wasn't your faith. It was us. Kami ang nagawa nito. And he was boasting about himself. Kaya doon ko maganda na yung New York. Gumaganda na yung mga ano, buwaba pa na yung mga sickness na hindi raw yung Diyos may kagawad na lang. So he was mocking God, just surprising how people seems to hate God. They do not give Him the credit, the glory that belongs to Him. Gusto lagi ng tao that they be their own God. That they create their own destiny, their own future. And they don't want nothing to do with God to be part of their lives. They're God-haters. And this is what the Bible says. They do not love the bride of Christ. They do not love the body of Christ. But we as Christians, we should love the things that God loves. Ito dapat yung maging dear sa atin. Yung mga bagay na mahal ng Panginoon. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13 says, Beloved, think it not strange. Huwag maging parang strange sa iyo. Concerning the fairy trial, which I is to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So makita natin, our joy is also in the suffering. Once we pass the suffering, the trials, nandiyan yung mga blessing, mga reward. And it seems like sometimes parang pag Tinitignan ko yung mga farmers, nakakapagod, mainit, nagsasaka, nagtakanin, 
Parang kung tayo tignan mo, napakahirap ng ginagawa niya. Parang masarap na sa airport ka lang, sa cellphone ka lang, nag enjoy Bakit yung farmer doon, tanim ng tanim, hirap ng hirap. Pero one day, yung kanya paghirap, paani siya. Nandun na yung masayang moment na maraming pang nakapaikot na, wow, blinesh yung mga tanim mo, wow. Pengi naman, wow, pengi. Uh, kaya bibili sila. Pero makita mo, maapo yung blessing. Pero hindi dumating yung blessing kung hindi rin siya nagtsagla na nagtanim mo na. In the same way with our sufferings, our trials, but all this one day will produce joy, blessing. We will overcome. God has not given us these trials para i-condemn tayo, ilubog tayo, but these trials will make us stronger, will purify us, and one day we will see the blessing na merong kapalit lahat ng mga pagsubok nito. Romans chapter 12 verse 5 So we being many are one body in Christ and every one member one of another. So makita natin we are many members but one body. Okay, for example, may daliri, may tenga, may paa, pero lahat yan is part of one body. Okay? When we talk about the eye, we talk about the body. We talk about the finger, it's part of our body. So we, this is what Jesus is saying. You are maaring maliit ka lang na member, you're doing but stay faithful because why? Nakakaambag ka dun sa body na yun. And as we all help together to strengthen that body, to grow, makita natin there is a blessing na parang pag nag-exercise. Isa na, ikita ko ng mga pictures ng mga tao na uh, 300 pounds, ang taba-taba nila, pero sa nila, magpukumit na, uh, dedicate na kami, we will have a different lifestyle, mag exercise kain properly, sleep right. Parang nag-check out sila year after year, they stay focused, faithfully. Bantang huli, makita nila yung result. Diba, makita mo before and after yung mga pictures na gano'n. And we, nakakamangha, paano nagawa rin itong tao na to? How did he do it? Because of his steady faithfulness with the little things. Proper diet, proper eating, proper and everything, all those little things add up. Diba? But if you don't start having discipline, what happens? Diba? Makita mo, uh, isang spoon lang, diba? Little ng spoon, magtataka ka, pero ay patabain ng tao. Because why? Pag wala na control yung spoon mo, ay kaya na kain. Bandang huli, alam mo yung stomach natin just craves for more. Sabi nga, it does not satisfy. Sabi nga ng mga ano yung coke. Sabi nga, it satisfies your thirst. Pero they, they did a statistic showing that coke actually makes you more thirsty. Meron daw something that, that addicts you, lalo na yung sugar, that you want more. And the more you want, the more you realize you're never satisfied. And that is one of their, their uh, agenda, is to get you hooked, to get addicted over something. And sabi na sugar is very addicted, addicting. It's addiction, parang drugs din yan. So makita natin, we need to learn to say, uh, hindi tayo kukontrolin ng addiction na ito. Hindi tayo kukontrolin ng ano, we need to control our body. We need to control what uh, what we take in our body. Because if we let it, we don't have self-control, bantang huli, kakainin tayong bumbo. And you see that person, that umiiyak, ano na siya, 300 pounds, hindi na siya makabangon sa kama, and he begins to cry, and depressed, and hindi niya maintindihan, bakit ako naging ganito kalaki? But it only took one, one bite at a time. One drink. Pero hindi niya alam, because naging pabaya siya. Yung kanyang health, na epektuhan. And the same way with our Christian life. Isang kasalanan lang dito, isang kasalanan dito, pinakabayaan natin, and all of a sudden, is destroying us of our life, of our relationship with Jesus Christ. We must learn to protect our body. We must learn to cherish the body that God has given us, especially the spiritual body. Napaka-importante. I remember one time in the church, kami ni Mega, we went to this church and yung pastor hindi na makabangon sa pulpito because sobrang laki. Uh, kailang tatlong tao, bubuhatin siya para makaangat. Tapos mga apat na hapang lang, meron ang upuan, nakaready, upo siya. Tapos pipreach siya sa kanila. Yun yung pastor nila. And he was preaching sitting down. And I was thinking, parang hindi mo ganda ng example bilang pastor. Na overweight na gano'n na hindi na makatayo, hindi na makabangon. 
so it sees we as a Christian, what does the world look at us when we see the church? Then they see us and they say, wow, there's a lot of people. There's a spiritual discipline, there's a guidance, there's a healthy growth of their family. So we, we, we need to present a church that will, will show who our God is. Ay, hindi Diyos nila, disiplinado siguro. And I truly believe we can do it because we have God that will help us. We have the church that will strengthen us. And number three, why is the church constantly attacked? Number three, because the church helps us grow stronger. Ano po ba yung church? Nagpapatulong yan para lumakas. Parang isang gym ng tao, lagi po punta sa gym. Makita mo yung tao na laging excited sa gym. Buhat na buhat. Workout na workout, but na uli, it helps him grow stronger physically. Tama ba? Pero yung tao na halimbawa hindi po punta sa gym, nagiging couch potato na lang sa stage, na tinatawag na couch potato, na upo lang na upo, upo lang na upo, lang na upo, lang na His life has been destroyed. The same way with the church. May mga tao na, next week na lang tayo church. They do not take it serious. Ay, yung church, saka lang lang yan. Uh, secondary na lang yan. O pagka talagang okay na lahat, we will think of going to church. But sabi ng Bible, no. Sabi ng Bible, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Dapat di tayo mag-waver. The world will waver. Okay? The world will panic. Pero sabi ng Bible, the church of God, you want true believers, dapat hindi tayo nang waver. We should know who holds tomorrow, who holds our faith, who holds our destiny, who holds our life. It is God. And the Bible says, do not waver. Be faithful. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love. Sabi rito, consider natin ang bawat isa na pinaprovoke natin, na dapat natin sabihin, kapatid, mahalin natin ang Diyos, lalo pa tayong lumapit sa Panginoon sa mga times ng crisis. Lalo natin huwag kalimutan ang patitipon-tipon. Sabi nga sa verse 25, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. When we see the day approaching, it's getting worse. And I believe in the Bible times, it never wasn't easy. Alam mo, it wasn't, it wasn't the law of the land to worship the Lord back then. Alam mo, pinapatay ngayon yung mga Kristiyano. Itong COVID na to is not even close to what's happening before. Pero makina mo, they never close the door sa halap ng agada. Remember, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. But even sa lagitnaan ng persecution nila, God never left them nor forsake them. And I truly believe whatever happens to us as we serve the Lord, we're faithful to the Lord, God will show us His power. God will show us that the church of God, that even the gates of hell shall not prevent it. God is a powerful God. He knows what He's doing. He's in control of all this. Number four, because the church is very powerful. That way, the church of God is very powerful. Sabi ng mga tao, the church ngayon, hindi na kapag tipong tipo. But I truly believe the church is more stronger than ever sa ngayon. More people are getting saved under this virus. And I was just listening to John MacArthur. Sabi niya, ngayon yung kanyang live stream is reaching all different countries and makikita nila, lalo may ganap yung gospel daw ngayon. Maraming mga tao na nagkaroon ng house church ngayon. Sabi nga ng joke of the day, sabi ni Satan, I got it controlled. Nakontrol ko na yung church. Wala na silang patitipon. Sabi naman ni Jesus, ni Jesus mali, lalo pang dumami yung patitipon. Nagkaroon ngayon yung mga three people sa mga bahay-bahay ngayon. Yung mga tao, lalo na nagkaroon ng time to pray. Larami yung mga tao, umiiyak ngayon, araw-araw, nalalangin sa Diyos. Yung prayer ay yung maabot na ngayon sa trono ng Panginoon. People start having time to pray, to worship, because why? Of what is happening. So I believe the church is very powerful. The church of God, nothing can go against. Even the gates of hell shall not prevail. Sabi sa Acts chapter 2, verse 24, verse 47, 
one of the church that was so powerful use in the time of the Bible it says and they continue steadfastly even with persecution under the time na to and the apostles doctrine and fellowship breaking of bread patuloy pa rin sila nag meet house to house patuloy pa rin sila nag fellowship patuloy pa rin sila nagsasama-sama na sinasabi ng mga tao ano ba ito mga tao mga mga buwang yata ito mga tao mga siraulo yata ito people na people may persecution na nga meron na nga nangyayari pero they did not fear but makita na mo what fear that came upon them sabi ng fear a different kind of fear that came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles alam mo things begin to happen when true believers worship during persecution it starts becoming a light a wildfire Wow, iba yung samahan na yun. Diba? The Catholics will fear, the Iglesia will fear, pero yung mga tunay na mananampalataya, they will still make a way because they know their God is real. They know their God is true. And their God is powerful. And the Bible says, Who can go against you? Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. And sabi rito, and, and all that believe were together and had all things in common. Lalo pa rin sila nagkaroon ng malasakit sa bawat isa. Under persecution, lalo sila nanalanginan sa bawat isa. Lalo sila nagtutulungan. Lalo sila nag-share ng mga blessing. And then wonderful things began to happen. Sabi nga, in some sold their possession. Mga iba, binenta pa nila yung mga possession nila, yung mga goods nila. Imparted them to all men as every man had need. In verse 6, 46, and they continually, they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be seen. I know sometimes we wonder why the church should be powerful in our opinion. Because sometimes we're not practicing what God wants us to practice. If we start practicing the Bible, we will begin to see the power of God moving. If we will start believing what we're reading instead of just reading it and not believing it. Okay? There's a difference when you read the Bible but you don't believe it. But when you read the Bible and you start believing it, you'll see the power of God. There is power and the church is very powerful. The church of God. Isaiah 40 verse 31. Not only the church is very powerful, that's why it's under attack. But number five, why is the church under attack? Because the church will help you stand strong in uncertain times. The church ay magpapatibay sa'yo. Kaya huwag kalimutan ang pagtitipo. Sabi ko, lahat na kalimutan. Make a way sa pagtitipo. Kahit you have to have an underground a church where, pero makita natin, they found ways, even yung communists, time napapatayin sila, they start digging tunnels, they start hiding out, but they did everything they can do, pero hindi nila tinigilan ang pagkitipong-tipon, because they knew that the church will help them stand strong in uncertain times. Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Alam mo, eagles are very unique creatures. Sabi nila yung eagles, the more yung storm na malakas, the more yung storm na tumataas, nasabayan daw yung eagle niya. Gustong gusto, why? Kasi lalo siyang umaangat. Kaya niya lagpasan yung taas ng storm. He can go above the storm because yung wings niya, ano, will just glide and glide higher and higher. Alam mo, we, the Bible says He wants us to be like the eagle. May problema, may storm, pero lalo lang tayo humangat about the storm. And we're just enjoying our life, serving faithfully the Lord because we know God will give us the strength to go on. We shall not faint, the Bible says, but we should like, be like the eagles that mount up wings and shall run and not be weary and they shall walk in that faint. So wait upon the Lord. Just be faithful. Strive. Go to church. Pray. Read your Bible. And you will see how God will just strengthen your life day to day. John chapter 16 verse 33 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. 
in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, have overcome the world. So we already have a champion, his name is Jesus Christ, and he said he had overcome the world. And if God has overcome the world, you will overcome it, because I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have a champion, we have one man that stood above everything and he still came out victorious. He is the true champion, our Savior, our Lord, our King of Kings. And he could be trusted even in time of crisis. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 10 says, Be sober. I know you say being sober. Let me buy word in. I know you mga taong lasing, they're not sober. Kaya na po ano na nagagawa nila eh. A sober mind is having a mind that is clear. Make sure you're not sober, you're not drunken, or uh, your mind will polluted with the garbage, with the, with the uh, things of the world. Sometimes we need to realize that there is a, a mindset that you control tayo ng mundo. They want to put fear and panic in us. And that's why all the news, that the makikita mo, shocking, shocking news, shocking. They want to build fear and panic. In everything you do, sabi nga, there's people that fears everything. Can't go out to their house because they fear, uh, may nakikir sa rats, may nakikir sa spider, may nakikir sa heights. May mga tao na kahit kailan, ayaw nila sumakay ng airplane. I met people and every day they're just living in fear. Kasi pag sumakay ng airplane, manabasa ko, nagka-crash yung airplane, baka mamatay ako. Meron mga iba, nagkikir sumakay sa kotse kasi pag kinignan na yung statistics, statistics show ay maraming car accident nangyayari. Ano? Marami pala nang mamatay sa kotse, huwag na tayo sumakay. Airplane, pag ginigit na nila, ang takin nang mamatay sa airplane. May posibilidad, pag sumakay airplane, mamamatay ako. Alam mo, mar marami nang mamatay sa germs. Marami nang mamatay sa ganito. Lahat, everywhere you look, it's bad news. And you'll just be paralyzed sa iyong bahay. Scared to do anything because, ala, baka ito na. But if you know who's tomorrow, it does not mean to be careless. Hindi ka na try, Lord, bahala ka na. Pikit mata na ako, mag-try ko ako, mabangga, mabangga, mga control. Hindi naman gano'n. Pag-awa ko yung managwela, do your best. Drive carefully. Pero even though you drive carefully, kung may buang naman na tao na babanggay ko, wala ka rin magawa. The, the same way with everything we do, we must give it to the Lord. Lord, ikaw bahala. I will do my best. I will drive my best. But Lord, protect me sa mga tao na hindi ba rumang drive. Lord, protect this vehicle. We always pray. We always trust in the Lord. So when things come like this, may virus, may sickness, yes, do our best. Wash our hands. Do what we can do. But Lord, we're trusting in you. Protect kami yung aming home. Pero we'll still go about doing our things. Hindi kami magpaparalyze sa piling namin katapusan ng mundo because we know that you're in control. So fear will paralyze you. It will cause you to worry, to depress, anxiety, and you don't realize you're going downhill already so quick where you can be enjoying like an eagle, waiting on the Lord, and God will give you the strength. He will protect you. You're wondering, wow, saan pala mamuhay na ang nagpipiwala sa Panginoon? Ang hira pala mamuhay na mamuhay sa Panginoon. It does not help. It does not, it just kills us, destroys us faster. Because lalo pa tayong kapitan ng sakit when we're down, when we're worrying, when we're panic, even yung pagtulog mo, even yung panaginip mo, hindi ka na makapanaginip ng mga things na maganda because iniisip mo lahat ng problema sa mundo. No? Lord, help me to rest in you. Help me to find my peace in you. Lord, give, give me a good night's sleep. Help me, Lord, to be refreshed. Napakasarap ma- gising sa umaga, minsan hindi na na-appreciate na tao, pero ang sarap ng umaga, tapos magkakapi ka, pe-pray ka sa Panginoon, that quiet time. But because sometimes, pag gising pala ng tao, self mo na agad tumunod, tingnan niya agad yung news, uh, buong day, ang bigat, and then you wonder, bakit napangda pa yung Christian life, why? Because you're not trusting no more in the Lord Jesus Christ. We must trust in the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. May He shall renew your strength. He will strengthen you. You'll be able to walk in that faith. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. I'm giving you a lot of verses because I want to 